Hello folks. Well, I've been flying simulators for many, many years. You know, all of them are good and they teach you basics, but I've settled on Aerofly RC7 Ultimate, as most of you know for reasons I've explained in many previous videos. When a fellow asked me a question on my recent video, he complained he couldn't get his USB transmitter to be seen in Aerofly. Well, I decided to go ahead and make this video because of that. Well, it was suggested to him, and it's been suggested by me, that it's a whole lot nicer to fly without the wire or a USB transmitter, as wirelessly is more comfortable. You can move around. The dongles and adapters actually make that all happen. First of all, at least in Windows, the transmitter has to be set up as a game controller within Windows itself. To do that, you plug in your simulator dongle, type the game controllers into the search box, on Windows 10, that's down on the left corner. Find the controller, select it, and calibrate it there. Once that's done, the program will easily find it. Of course, most of you gamers already know that. Well, in my case, I like to fly the sim with my own transmitter. So I like the Aerofly interface dongle and I've used it for many years. It allows you to plug in a receiver of your choice to use. It must be bound to your transmitter also before it will work, just like a new plane. Well in my case I've been using the orange receiver which is only six channels. Most of the sims as well as real model airplanes don't need more than six channels anyway so that's worked pretty good. Well since there are so many parameters on Aerofly RC7 from flaps, air brakes, engine cutoff, auto rotation, lights on or off, smoke, wheel brakes, canopy open and close, etc., etc. And especially when flying the full scale sim, Aerofly FS2, you're going to need more than six channels to fly and have a lot of fun. So I went ahead and decided to purchase the Spectrum dongle because I fly my sim with a Spectrum transmitter and I'm very familiar with programming it. In all the searches, I could not find out how many channels the Spectrum dongle supported, not even on their website. So today I'm going to set it up and find out myself. I did find out it doesn't work with the old Realfly 7.5 or below, or Realfly X or Phoenix, but all others it does, including on all Apple computers. So my friend Lloyd Romeo, and yes, that is his real name, well, he and I used to work together 40 years ago tuning electronic microwave filters for the space shuttle. Well, he sent me some radio equipment a few months ago, and one transmitter was a Spectrum DX7. It needed a switch replace, and I also decided while it was open to go ahead and remove the throttle indents, as when you're flying a helicopter inverted, one indent always seemed to be too much or too little so removing them makes a perfectly smooth throttle stick and easy to hover in one place. The DX7 always has had some of the smoothest gimbals of any transmitter, so I welcome this transmitter to add to my program. I usually fly my Aerofly sim with a Spectrum DX8, although I can't use the two channels because I only have a six channel receiver on it. It's usually not a problem, I just have to use the keyboard to select flaps or speed brakes or something like that. So instead of buying an 8-channel receiver to hook up to the Aeroflight dongle, I decided to try the Spectrum dongle hoping it would see 8 or more channels. And it does. And since Aerofly allows you to fly with a second transmitter and a friend with his plane, I decided to set it up this way and see if it supported all 7 channels. Well first I had to find it in Windows and calibrate it as I said before. Next, I started the program and went to the controllers to begin calibrating it there. As you can see, the red channel is not being shown since this is a 7 channel radio, so I'm going to bypass it. But this verifies that 8 channel transmitters can use all 8 channels.
Okay, now I'm going to try to fly two planes at once since there's no one around here to fly with me. Both the Aerofly dongle and the Spectrum dongle are hooked up and they do not interfere with each other, so this is great. This is also fun, but it's pretty hard to do by yourself. So now let's go ahead and try it on Aerofly FS2. This is the full size simulator. Here I can calibrate the transmitter for both airplanes and helis. At the bottom left I first select the Spectrum dongle. Here I'm programming the primary, that's for airplanes. Well, I'm really satisfied with the Spectrum dongle. It was really easy to set up. It works with all Spectrum or Orange transmitter and it sees the full eight channels, which is way more than enough to learn to fly or practice on your simulator. I totally recommend it. So thanks kindly for watching. And if you have Aerofly RC7 Ultimate, then come fly with me. This is the Nightflyer, over and out.